So in position, I pick up the play deck, look at the bottom playing card, and then I spread the deck across the table, like so, and that is the deck switch. and welcome back thanks for being here charlie and i both appreciate you choosing to spend a bit more time with us today don't we charlie that's right thanks in this video i'm going to teach you a monster of a deck switch at a card table you need to be sat down you need a table and if you've seen the last video the french exchange and this move will come to you very easily it's very similar in what's happening behind the scenes and what's going on it is a little bit risky it's a little bit dangerous there's a lot going on but it just looks beautiful it looks wonderful does it not charlie as ever we're going to start with the mechanics or a basic exposure of what's going on and then we'll work backwards from there so you need two decks of playing cards obviously um, i'm using two very contrasting decks so you can see when the switch has happened we're gonna have the play deck in front of us here and we're gonna start right right before the moment happens so in your left hand you're gonna put the cold deck between finger three and the clunge of the left hand uh, finger four helps a little bit you might look at this and say yeah that's a, a gambler's cop a modified gambler's cop of course we can't get through a video without a gambler's cop, of course. But if you just rest your left arm on the table like this, right arm freely in front, and then take the deck and simply place it between finger free and the clunge like so, and then relax your hand again. This will allow your hand to remain relaxed and very natural looking, but it will also teach you what the correct pressure, the correct grip is. You don't want to be crushing that deck. You want to be holding it just enough so that it's not going to fall or playing cards aren't going to fall out of the deck onto your lap. Now in a second, the left hand, the switch hand is going to move to the side to make way for the switch. It's going to enable the switch by lining the deck up in position and then it's gonna move out of the way. So if you look at the behavior of me picking this deck up, looking at the bottom card and then putting it back down, spreading the deck back down on the table, this arm is in the way. So I have to move this arm so it's self-justified. The eye of the audience is following the biggest movement. So the biggest movement is gonna be me lifting the deck up, looking at the bottom card. You don't have to do that, but I need the deck to be up here. So for that to make sense, if I just lift it up here, don't even look at it and then do a spread, it doesn't make sense. So I, that's my justification. I pick the deck up, look at the bottom, uh, bottom playing card, then I put the deck down like this as I move my arm out of the way to make way for the switch. So that's what it's gonna look like. Notice what happens to the left, left arm. My body language, I'm moving backwards when I'm putting the deck down, which justifies, which, ex, which allows the left hand to move out of the way without question. That was a long sentence, Charlie. So here's what it looks like. The deck is ready and waiting. Pick the deck up, look at the bottom plank card, then spread the deck across the table like so. And the switch has been achieved. And the play deck is now sitting comfortably, a little bit too comfortably on my lap. Here. Yes, discrepancies. Please, I welcome you. Why would anybody spread a deck like this? This is the one thing that I don't like about this switch. This is also why I choose the more difficult version of this. Now, what makes this next variation difficult is the way that you have to palm the deck. So I'm now gonna grip the deck between finger free, once again, and a clunge on my left hand in a very uncomfortable position with the deck and lengthways like so, like this. Now, the grip, it really is just between finger three and the clunge. So that deck, when I put my hand down, 
it's allowed to kind of move and bend around and as long as finger three doesn't let go then I'm safe. Once again, if you put your left arm on the table like this and then put the deck in position between finger three and the clunge, this will be your natural position. Bear in mind that this hand is going to be behind the right arm so you've got more shade than you think. What's going to give this away is if you grip in the deck too hard because all the muscles are going to show, the tendons are going to be in weird positions and you're going to get this strange claw thing going on. You want to be as relaxed as possible. Now we're going to do the same thing. The play deck this time is like so. Um, I'm resting, I'm going to pick the deck up. Notice when I pick the deck up, my left arm moves central. So I line up the, the switching deck central. Now we are lined up and ready to go. So that's the first part of me moving backwards. Now when I, when I go to spread it, I go down like this and then spread it. Now when I, when I go to spread it, I go down like this and then spread it. And you hear this thing like, so I don't, I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, but you hear the sound of the deck being pressed down on the table. And that's one of the things that hides up, that hides any possible sounds that made by that deck landing on my lap. But also sometimes you can find that this deck hits the table and it makes an unwanted sound. I'll do this slow motion so you can see what my deck hand is doing because I need my thumb to spread this deck. So I lift the deck up, bottom playing card. On my way down, I kind of scoop down like this. Now I'm aiming the deck to land just here, just over the edge of the table. When I drop the deck here, the, the free hand, the right hand is gonna keep moving. There's a lot going on and it's difficult to slow down, but here's a, a slow version of it. So here, and then my thumb hits the back and then spreads as my left arm slowly makes its way further out of the way. When you're letting go of that play deck, the motion of your hand has to be going at the same speed as gravity. So if you pay attention to the play deck, it doesn't really matter where I drop it from if my hand is at the same speed, so I could drop it from here as long as I match the speed of that car, of that deck going down. Now the eye is following not just the deck, they're not just following the deck, but they're following my motion, my movement. So your eye follows this, it follows my hand. So even without doing a deck switch, it can kind of look a little bit like a deck vanish. Obviously it doesn't, but you get what I'm saying. The eye follows the hand rather than the deck. So deck up, look at the bottom card, spread across the table, the switch has been achieved. Now you might think that looking at the bottom playing card needs to be justified, it needs to be explained. And by all means, write this into your pattern, write this into your routine. It could be as simple as, oh, you picked the nine of clubs. Let's just make sure you didn't shuffle it to the bottom of the deck. You know, something like that. I found that even just lifting the deck up to inspect it, to have a look at it without explaining anything, it, it flies, it goes by, because you're not explaining anything, you're not setting anything up, you're simply looking at the deck and then you're putting it down and now we're going to talk about the deck that's on the table. You'll notice something that I did then when I when I achieved that switch, I looked away from the playing cards and I was thinking, this is going to be your best friend when you're doing this switch in front of somebody. Wherever my attention is, that's where everyone else's attention is going to be. It's a, a general rule of sleight of hand. It's not misdirection, it's direction of attention. Here's a good example of that. They've just finished shuffling, the deck's on the table, I pick the cards up and then I spread them out and I look away. Now I'm thinking, like I've looked at the deck and I'm thinking about what I've seen and I'm thinking about what to do next. I'm offering this idea that there's a little bit of doubt, there's a moment of doubt. This completely distracts from what's just happened and it looks like I've just picked the deck up and then put it back down, spread the deck out and now I'm thinking. So I've distracted people by not even doing anything, by not talking, by not saying anything, by not saying, oh, look at that elephant over in the corner of the room, Charlie, did you see it? Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to misdirect, I'm trying to direct. Now this deck is gonna be set up right from the beginning and it's gonna be in this position, right? So it's gonna be face up, face up diagonally like this. I hope you can see that so that when my hand, when I relax and I rest and I put my left hand down, like so, get that focus, like so, when my hand relaxes here, it's in the correct position, it's natural. All I have to do is reach down and grab that deck and then manipulate it into the palm in position. So now we're just one-handed fumbling around with the, whilst the right hand shades the front, I've managed to get this deck into the correct position. So it starts, here like this so I can always have my hands, I can, 
I can always have to show both hands empty and then when I relax for a moment like this now I've got the deck in the correct position so deck in position lift the deck up and then spread and the deck has been achieved and you heard the playing cards land on the floor which is so annoying if you want to invest if you want to look into this is something called the savant which is like a shelf underneath the table uh, made for ditched playing cards or ditched sponge balls and things like that, ditched sausages. Now, one final idea with this, um, which might help with your practices, is if you do this with the deck in the box, you can throw the box out to the audience, have them open, shuffle, put the cards back in the box. Then when they throw you the box back, you can say, look, so you shuffled this deck. Now we're gonna do some tricks with a sausage to deck of playing cards. Charlie, that's genius. We should have just taught that. That was the French exchange deck switch. I'm Daniel Madison. See you next time.